Our second scripture in our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 3. We heard a little bit about this passage from Mrs. Mead in our time with young disciples. I'll be reading Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Hear the word of God. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I am coming after me, I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor And will gather his wheat in the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the word of the Lord. During the season of Advent, we prepare. Uh, We prepare to once again celebrate, but we also, during the season of Advent, remember what it means to have the Messiah among us. We are once again finding our way to the kingdom that the Messiah has brought to us that is among us. I think a wonderful way to find our way back to that kingdom and what we are about during this season of Advent is to look at the prophet Isaiah because it's in the prophets where we have words that we're preparing the people for the Messiah, for this very kingdom. So, We use the prophets to help us now find our way once again to that kingdom. And as we read from the prophet Isaiah this morning, what strikes me is that Isaiah was giving the design for this kingdom. What will the design for the kingdom be? I don't know if it has to do with just all the other options that now exist for home improvement shows or podcasts or what it is. But it seems that people are more into design than ever. We are into designing our personal living spaces, our worshiping spaces. Um, We are very cognizant of how everything is coming together, how the color with the fabric, with the textures, how it's all melding. We seem to have this this renewed interest with, with design in our lives. And of course, now we have technology that has entered in, so you can come up with all kind of ideas, put them into a program, and actually see what the room may look like. If you're wanting to redesign your kitchen, you have all these wonderful new appliances you can now put into your kitchen. You know, you can be in the grocery store and call up your refrigerator to see what you have in your refrigerator. Or you walk in and there's a screen that can show you what's in your refrigerator. And I know that we're very close and may already have refrigerators who talk to us. Can you imagine what this is going to be like when you're going for that late night ice cream and the refrigerator is saying, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I don't know if that's a great idea. We are, we are focused on on design. We are focused on the part we see, the observable, the, the seen part of design. 
But there are really two elements we need to consider with design. There is the seen part, but then there is the unseen part, the structural elements that go into design. See, and that's what the prophet Isaiah picks up on that's amazing. He says, it's not just going to be what is seen, what can be seen with eyes, but it's the roots, what's coming from the roots, what's coming from the structural level that we also need to be aware of. So if you're doing design in your personal space, your personal kingdom, so to speak, you are very aware of what is seen, but then there is the part that's unseen. You know, the rage is to have open concept. So people will say, I want open concept. Let's take down these walls. Well, there's an unseen element to your design. You know, that, that wall happens to be holding up the second floor. So, so if you take down that wall, it's not going to work very well for you. Or people want to re, let's reconfigure our rooms. Well, you have your duct work and your wiring is running through those walls. See, there's an unseen element to design. Now, when it comes to our personal spaces, even if you're not an architect or an engineer, I think you can kind of intuit what some of these unseen elements might be. Even though we're not architects, we kind of get if it's a load-bearing wall and we take it down, it's not going to be good. You know, we, we kind of get that. It's, it's somewhat obvious. You know, we have that right here in this beautiful sanctuary when we went ahead and stabilized all these rosettes. You know, what a wonderful design to the ceiling. And we wanted to put more lights on the ceiling. But you know, when we started talking about stabilizing those rosettes, there's a whole structure above the ceiling. And then you had to be aware, well, wait a minute. We're adding weight to the ceiling. Can the unseen structure handle the additional weight of what we need to do to stabilize each one of those rosettes individually. There's a seen and an unseen part to, to design. Now, when it comes to our Christian lives, I believe we're pretty good with the seeing part again. We, we understand what it, what it means, what the coming of Christ, we understand the basics of that the observable parts of that, the elements you see. You know, we, we get that we're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves. We know that we have received grace upon grace. You know, we are to forgive others. We, we get all those parts, that, that seeing part. But see, the prophet Isaiah now is moving to the unseen elements of the kingdom that the Messiah brings. And this is where we have a big problem. Because in our own personal lives, when it comes to design, we intuit what the unseen structural elements look like. But when it comes to the kingdom that the Messiah brings, if you try to use your own intuition to intuit what the unseen structural roots of your faith are to be about, you start to have difficulties because it's not natural for us to go in this direction. And that's exactly what the prophet is trying to prepare us for. The prophet says that you need to know the structural elements are righteousness, faithfulness, the knowledge of God. Well, well, let's think about the knowledge of God. When Jesus comes, he, he shares that knowledge with us. The Messiah is sharing the structural elements, the unseen, the roots of our faith. And what does he say about that? He says, you know, if you want to be first, you need to be willing to be last. If you want to be the ruler of all, well, no, in my kingdom, you really have to have an attitude of being the servant of all. You know, you should not be anxious. Do not be anxious and worry about what you eat and what you wear and what you have. See, no, you, you need to let go of that anxiety in my kingdom. Um, we need to be people who do not prioritize our possessions. You remember when the rich young ruler asked, what, is, what does it take for me to be a disciple? Jesus said, well, you know, you need to be willing to let go. Hold these possessions very lightly. 
See, that's the, that's the unseen structural part of the kingdom that is being brought. We, we kind of get the seen part, but we, we want to make a leap, use our human intuition and kind of go to what the unseen part looks like. And that's where we run into some real issues. You know, it's, it's as if we, we really want it still to be our kingdom. We want it built on the foundation of ourselves, our own lives. We, that's, that's how we want to build this. Really, it still remains about us. But you know what happens? Think about this very space we're sitting in. When you kind of have the outside part figured out, but you haven't really attended to the unseen part, it can, it can literally collapse in on you. Or it's where that frustration comes from when we say, I just don't quite feel like I ever get the faith discipleship thing. Is, is it possible that you have part of it, part of the design, the seen part, but you struggle with the, the unseen, the, the structural elements, the roots that need to be there and in place? Uh, during this Advent season, may, may we together uh, find our way. May we find our way to a kingdom, and may we find our way in understanding the design, the design, and be willing to let go of our need to still build it upon our own lives, but truly build it on the knowledge of the living God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.